Agatha all along has explored various locations in just three episodes, including Westview, Agnes's version, Westview, Agatha's version, and The Witch's Road. The Witch's Road is more than just a dangerous forest and contains different locales aligned with various elements. Jennifer's Trial, also known as the Water Test, is the first challenge the Coven must overcome on their journey. Teen, Agatha, and the Coven arrive at the Witch's Road, a magical forest hidden beneath Westview. Despite being chased by the Salem Seven, they must face trials that test their fears and knowledge of witchcraft. Without access to their traditional powers, they rely on analog magic. Teen's inability to communicate his identity raises suspicion, particularly from Lilia, who suspects Agatha's involvement. Each member of the Coven has a personal goal. Jennifer seeks to unleash her magic, Lilia aims to reverse her fortune, Alice wants answers about her mother, and Mrs. Davis simply wants her purse back. The group encounters a dangerous quicksand-like mud patch, highlighting the importance of staying on the path. Mrs. Davis and her coven reach a beach house, but find themselves trapped inside. Jennifer warns Teen about Agatha, who traded her child for the Book of the Damned. They discover a riddle about wine, and everyone drinks it except Agatha, who pours hers into a plant. After drinking the wine, everyone's faces swell up, and Agatha reveals that they have ingested Alewife's revenge, which can cause severe reactions. Despite her usual indifference, Agatha reluctantly drinks the wine when Teen threatens to do so. Her strong reaction raises questions about her motives for protecting him. After a struggle, Agatha, Jen, and Lilia successfully create an antidote using Teen's blood and force Sharon to drink it, saving her from the poison. However, Sharon tragically drowns while they escape through the oven's slide, leaving them saddened. The episode marks a shift from exposition to a more intricate plot, with intriguing character backstories revealed through flashbacks and Agatha's complex relationship with Teen and Ick. The show seems poised to present a series of magical escape room challenges, with failure resulting in death, akin to a whimsical version of Squid Game. Agatha All Along Episode 3 confirms Mephisto exists in the MCU, in the third episode of Agatha All Along, the witches of Agatha's Coven find a sigil on Joe Locke's character and suspect Agatha's involvement. Jennifer Kale warns Teen to be cautious around Agatha, due to rumors that she traded her son, Nicholas Scratch, for the Darkhold, leaving his fate unknown and raising the possibility of him being an agent of Mephisto. This marks the first explicit mention of Mephisto in the MCU, confirming the existence of the demon who, like Dormammu and the Dark Dimension, rules over a dimension called Hell. The concept of Mephisto's agents suggests that he employs desperate magic users to carry out his tasks on Earth. While it remains uncertain, the possibility arises that one of the characters in Agatha all along may be working for Mephisto, adding an intriguing layer of mystery to the narrative. When Mephisto could finally appear in the MCU, Agatha all along episode 3 introduces the possibility of a character working for Mephisto, with Aubrey Plaza's Rio Vidal and Teen being potential candidates due to their suspicious actions and motivations. The reveal of Mephisto's agent could set the stage for the demon's appearance in a future MCU project, potentially involving Sacha Baron Cohen's portrayal of Mephisto in the upcoming Ironheart series. Mephisto's connection to the villain The Hood and his magical demonic cloak adds intrigue to the storyline. While the exact role of Mephisto in Ironheart remains unclear, the confirmation of his existence in the MCU after years of speculation generated by Agatha all along marks a significant development in the franchise.